Okay, so we're looking at day three of Advent of Code in JQ. So I've already solved the logic using JavaScript, um, and JavaScript is very much my kind of um, my prototype language for any language that I then move on to. Um, so I know how to kind of roughly approach this, and I'll adjust uh, the the methods that I use uh, for JQ. So um, the the problem is to kind of navigate to toboggan through uh, this kind of a land and trees. And um, this tree line repeats, so we need to use things like modulates. And um, the aim is to know how many trees that we will hit as we tumble down the uh, tree line. So I've got the input in uh, JQ term. And um, what I'm going to do is kind of start off by doing a parse routine. Um, and this is going to be a split on new lines. And then we're just going to call parse. Um, oh, we need to do a slurp and raw. And that will give us our lines. So uh, that's a good starting point, but we actually want to construct some kind of object. So trees is a dot. Um, and the single string doesn't have like a substring, so we're going to have to split this into uh, individual characters. Um, and that has exploded. Split already. Oh. No, map, no. Dot, uh, map, split. Yeah, there you go, that's what I wanted. Um, and then I need the width of the first one. So, um, dot zero length. Let's collapse the trees. Okay, so that's the, the width of the like number of objects we have to go through. And that's what we're going to do the modulus on. Um, so now we're going to do call uh, tree run. And we're going to pass in uh, the kind of vector. So three and uh, one. And actually, it's, that's how you do arguments in uh, JQ. And I keep forgetting. Um, tree run. This is going to be uh, DX and DY. Um, Semicolon. Okay. Yep, that's looking okay. Um, and what I'm going to do here is capture this as source, and then I'm going to create this new object that is going to be um, x, y, and then collisions. And uh, from that, I'm going to create a sub function, which is run. And I'm going to call that, and that's going to iterate through every line. So we currently have no collisions, and the run function is going to do uh, dot x or dot y equals uh, dot y plus dollar dy. Um, so we can see it's already starting to have effect. And we're going to do the same thing to x. Uh, but we also have to do modulus. So um, if, <clears throat> let's say we, we move 13 across, we need to make sure that we do uh, modulo rather than modulus um, dollar source, which is what we captured it as. Yeah, dollar source, dollar width. Um, I have a feeling that these two numbers need to be in brackets. Um, so that's our new x, y, and now we are going to do um, if dot uh, source dot trees dot y dot x equals uh, hash or a pound symbol, then um, dot collisions equals collisions plus one. And for whatever reason, I can't remember why, but we have to do an else. This makes sure that the object gets kind of passed back through. Um, so let's move that back down to three. Um, so this is fine, but at this point, we then want to say uh, if dollar source dot trees dot y. If we still have trees 
to move through, or even we're going to even do plus one, uh, then run. And we have to do an else here. I'm, I mean, if I do an end, yeah, it doesn't work. Else dot end. There we go. So that is the code. I mean, I can do that on multiple lines, but that is the code to uh, do the simple tree run. So we get the actual input. Um, oh, I've lost the actual input. No way it's done here. There we go. Let's pop that into here. 153, which is this value here. So cool, that works as uh, day one. Let's grab that and let's stick it into uh, A. All right, so that's good. Let's drop that into B as well. Um, and then I'm gonna do, just gonna use JQ here. I don't know why I'm switching. No mon, rather not JQ. Um, so I've got slurp, raw, read in this file, using this file, reading that file. Okay, uh, save that. Okay, um, oh, yeah, my input's still bad. Uh, actually, no, let's stick with the test input, that's fine. Um, so this code is kind of it's kind of right, except when we parse, we want, um, it's quite a useful feature, debug. Um, it will kind of spit out, it'll kind of pass in the object, print it out on screen, then pass it back out again. Uh, so it's kind of a, like a stream that you can debug from. Um, pretty handy. I had in last year's I had like a uh, I don't know thirteen. I had like a log function. God knows if it's in this one. Oh my lord, that's log code. A yeah, log, a yeah, module, log. So I had a thing where you could pass in like an extra string, so you can pass objects into it as well. Um, anyway, uh, so what we're going to do here is instead of um, just running once with three and one, I'm going to store this as the, a variable source, and then I'm going to create an array of um, the vectors. So I'm gonna pop that in there, and let's just do that, and then do that, and then do that, okay. And I'm going to map those vectors into tree map and then bring out collisions. And I think I'm going to, ha so let's pass in uh, dot naught and pass in dot one. And that doesn't work. And the reason that doesn't work is uh, this because dot source. Now I've got this variable source here but there's no kind of like global scope. So actually I'm going to, have to pass the source into our tree run. Um, so the input, really there's no input that we're using here. Um, I mean, actually, I guess I could, I could just, I could do it there. Nope, maybe I can't. What are these errors? Let's, um, let's clear my screen and run it again. <clears throat> source is not defined. Oh, because I got rid of that line. Silly sod. No, it doesn't like that. Um, I've got a feeling. Oh yeah, so uh, right. what's happened here is the source becomes a context as soon as you go through the pipe. Dot is referring to the source object, which is wrong. Dot wants to be this thing. Uh, so it actually makes more sense to just pass it in as an argument. Um, kind of, we lose the, oh, semicolons. Kind of lose the chaining that is nice about JQ, but it's, you know, we're not trying to kill ourselves doing this. We just want it to work. Okay, so we now have uh, a sequence of numbers, uh, 27342. So we should see 27342. Cool. Okay, now we have to uh, multiply those together. So uh, we want a reduce. Um, if I can remember how to do a reduce, uh, dot blair as dot n and then zero and then dot plus n that's not it might just do debug pipe nope didn't even like that uh probably got my syntax wrong so uh, let's hit the manual uh, reduce 
Always forget how reduce works. All right, so um, like, is there an example? <clears throat> so it kind of explodes out every one of the items and calls it item. That looks all right. That's what that is. It's quite literally what we want. That. That's what I've got, isn't it? Yeah. That's N. And then we've got obviously missing something. All right, let's copy this because that works. All right. Plum. I'm literally missing the word reduce. There we go. Oh, no, it's not add. Uh, multiply. Ah. There you go. So I had the same problem in the. Um, in the JavaScript example where I was doing a reduce, but I was starting with a value of zero. And obviously if you multiply everything by zero, you're gonna get zero. So three, three, six, and we've got the answer. So let's just put in the real uh, input. Multiple times. And let's restart that. Whacking great number. Sweet, there it is. Um, so yeah. That is how I would solve that using JQ. Um, not super keen on this this bit where I've kind of completely lost like what's being passed in. Kind of feels like I'm losing what's special about JQ, and I, I really can't remember why I have to do these um, these else statements. I mean, I get that. I think what's happening is if I don't do an else, it's returning a, a null object, so not even a null object. It's like a, just a nothing. Um, I think. JQ has like a nil object. No, nope, doesn't have null. It's got something that is like, this is nothing. Um, I can't remember what it is, but it's in there somewhere. Anyway, um, it's like a no op effectively. Is it there? Nulls, whatever. Um, yeah, so that is working. So yeah, it didn't take too much to switch. Obviously made a big difference that I knew how to do this in JavaScript. Uh, I am almost certain that I can't do this in Z80 assembly. So yeah, there's that. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, thanks for the handful of people who are watching. Cheers. Bye.